Well, I, I appreciate, first of all, that there's a significant disparity between our familiarity with the genre. So I appreciate you talking about the RTS specific examples, mostly because I haven't thought as deeply about it as it pertains to other genres that I, you're a bit more familiar with, like the shooter genres and stuff. So I, I wanted to... Yeah, last on. RTS I played was probably Total Annihilation. Right, Boy. yeah. <laughs> so what you've probably not known is like something you mentioned about tuning, the paradox of like when design becomes yeah. deadened is you're talking about like tuning it to the point where it's like just like barely worth it or not. Yeah. And this happens in the, in the Starcraft two campaigns, something that you'll see a lot is there's like oceans of pre-placed assets that are inalienable, right? Like it's always there depending on the difficulty you select, which I think difficulty selection is overrated anyway. But if you were going to have something like that, and then your only choice or your only change is to like increase the number of units per attack wave or something. And like, they're not playing by the same rule. So most RTS AI cheat with money. They know exactly mm -hmm. the whole map. Like they have all these godlike powers that the player doesn't. Sure. So they're yeah. playing a different game fundamentally. And then obviously they have all of these starting assets that the player doesn't have, but they don't use them to immediately wipe out the player, which is what an actual player would do. They like have this weird scripted dance where they're sort of yeah. doing this choreographed like fake environment where it, you can tell just as a player, like, oh, this is not actually engaging with me. If I was up against a real player, this would be completely different. Uh, or somebody who wanted to win, right? It's like, it doesn't have yeah. to be a human player. It's like, you're- Yeah, you're it's totally just letting you win. In, or even if you ultimately lose, it's like, it's paced. Yeah. To, to force the designer's idea of what a good experience is supposed to be, right? Yes. And yeah, like, it, that's actually one reason why I don't play this genre. Yeah. Is because I hate that feeling of being condescended to as a player, right? Well, this is a, uh, so you talked earlier about games are a low brow genre or, or medium is something that you had mentioned. Yeah. And I feel like there is a, like the vast majority of people who play games, regardless of platform or, you know, personal taste, probably see them as toys more than they see them as art or potential vectors for art. Right. And this goes back to like, you were talking about definitions for what a story is. It's like, I feel like a lot of people have used that definite, have abused the definition of art as well, where it's like. I mean, technically you can just say that most things are bad art, but I feel like that's kind of devaluing the term of art because like art is supposed to be something that pro begets a reaction that ideally is unique, that has quality to it, right? And there's like a lot of implicit assumptions that I put into the term art. And that's why I've actually been loath to call video games art usually because most of them don't feel that to me. They feel like there's this, they're, again, they're, they're designed, but like not in a way that's leaving you with choice or engaging with you. It's ways that are condescending. It's ways that are, non-specific and when you're trying to do something like that like the the very presence of a difficulty selector to me indicates that you couldn't design a uh you were afraid perhaps or unwilling to create a game where there's a threshold and if you can't pass that threshold you got to get better or get out and that's like what the statement we're making right and so i'm not going to have difficulty selection in my games and i'm not going to have yeah. um the idea that like you know, oh, there's adaptive difficulty where like the AI goes easier on you if you lose the mission five times in a row or something. Uh, I've, you know, some people in my thought space are saying like they activate games journalist mode after a certain amount of time, but it's not the games journalist mode you think. It's actually that if you die like a hundred times, then, or, or something like in a, some thing happens where you're clearly not good enough, then the enemies get actually harder, which I think is a bit sadistic, but it's like, okay, you know, you're like, again, these are ideas that are pro like prohibiting audience. And they're saying, if you're like, we only want an audience that is willing to improve or already at this level. And that is going to make a different experience, right? And, and so it's like, challenge is not actually a part of the average designer's repertoire, it seems. They're not really using it as a tool. They're not using it as like, a, it's not in earnest, right? It's like, you know, a bunch of pre-play stuff or it's a bunch of godlike cheating powers or it's a, like unfair advantages stacked into it. And then it's like modulated by making those people dumb so that these actors in a play are not going to actually compete with you. They're just gonna put on a show and you like get the satisfaction, I guess, but it's all hollow of, you know, popping headshots on enemies that are barely moving or something, right? And so yeah, that's it just the feels thing. super fake. Like yeah. the whole the the best practices that the genre has adopted just feel super fake and, and lame, right? Yes. Now, so just so people know, it's like it's not literally true that the last RTS that I played was Total Annihilation <laughs> One, but like that's the pro that might be the last campaign that I completed. I forget what order. Like, did Homeworld Two come after that or something? I but, think so, um, but yeah, it's been a long time either way. I actually the most recent RTS that I actually played a little bit of was I think Homeworld Deserts of Karak, which came out I don't know within the past year. My condolences because I've seen the yeah it was that and... I I did not play it very far yeah um 
but but it was you know it was definitely just this exactly this same kind of a thing there was like no new idea actually no the last rts that i literally played was two days ago okay it was this starship troopers game that oh was really okay bad. yeah i haven't i haven't played it myself <laughs> but i remember thinking that maybe there's not that much new ideas in that if it's uh no it, usually it, when it, you have these tie-ins for like genre uh, properties like there's a tra- uh not transformers there's a, a terminator rts I forget oh, what it's called. Okay. That's coming out yeah. or it's already out. And so that's another thing that's like Starship Troopers, which is like modern RTS, right? In air quotes, because yeah. modern doesn't mean anything for RTS games because they haven't evolved. And it's like, yeah. here's another case of that. So I'm just default cynical and I try not to be, but then I play these games and it, nothing good happens. Well, here's the thing though, right? So RTS used to be one of the biggest genres or the biggest genre in games. Like around, you know, the Command and Conquer 1, 2 kind of time frame. They were huge, right? They were just the biggest. And then and then somehow we went from that to like essentially complete commercial death of the genre, right? Like it, when there are RTS games made now, they're like smaller games with smaller budgets, right? There ain't no Call of Duty RTS. Um, why? What happened? And people in the industry just sort of shrug and go, well, you know, the genre died out, right? But I actually think it is quite possible to, like, strangle your thing to death by this series of steps that seems like the right step at every time, right? So this whole thing we were just talking about, about how the designs of these things, like, somehow everybody agreed that this general way to design RTSs was the right one, where you know it's pacing you out and sort of letting you win and and sort of lying to you about what's happening and all that and they s- sort of think that players aren't going to notice that and then somehow mysteriously the genre dies and it's like really like you don't think that people who want to play war games maybe are interested in like challenge and actually winning as opposed to pretend winning right um it's just very weird to me the way that nobody ever questions these. Like people who supposedly are game designers for a living just like don't question these. Things. Well, the, um, yeah, so, yeah, the thing for me that immediately comes to mind when you were asking why did the genre die? And it's like, yes, these campaigns progressively decreased in, I would I would just say objective quality if your objective goal is to, like I, I can't, this is a different tirade like tangent, but people who say that there's no such thing as objective quality to me are missing the point because it's like, if you know what the intent was, then you can grade that objectively to some degree. Like there's some element where your subjective experience is going to color that. But if your objective is to create a real time strategy environment and have, you know, thousands of units fighting for dominance over this giant map. And then your map, your game comes out and there's like 10 units per player because you're using 3d for the first time, like Warcraft three, and you don't really know how to make engine performance put together. And then you're, you know, that you compensate for that by making battles take like 10 years to resolve because all the units have too much health and too little damage and all of this stuff happens. And then you also add heroes and, you know, all these other, I would say just say mistakes, then yeah, that is an objective failure. But another thing that Warcraft three spawned was obviously Dota, the defense of the ancients, the sort of primordial MOBA, if you ignore the StarCraft custom map. And like MOBAs are like less than half of a game compared to an RTS. Like they take away more than half of the game mechanics and they leave you with something that is also not even a full game if you compare it to like an FPS where you move differently than you shoot. It's like you move and and attack in the same with just the mouse and stuff. So you're not even really playing a complete game if your bar of complete game is some games that came before it. But that accessibility combined with the fact that Warcraft 3 itself was not a competitive title, like didn't compete for your time, meant that way more people flocked to this custom map and that eventually spawned like, you know, all of these other offshoots that are simpler games, which I think generally simpler products probably do appeal to a wider audience. But that didn't mean that the genre had to die. It, I think I agree with you that it died because of its concepts. Like it, it, it died on its own hill. It's not, it's not like, oh, a better genre came or, or a more accessible genre came or whatever. It's that they, these, they didn't continue pushing the envelope. They pushed it the wrong direction, like off the table. And now it's just a mess. So it's just very weird to me. It, it not only got pushed in the wrong direction, but like everybody agreed that that was the direction to all push simultaneously, right? It's like, let's all push this off this cliff over here, right? And and not question it. 